This video, as always, started with a really silly idea. I was incredibly bored, and I wanted to try and build a scary face. And what I created is... I mean, let's face it, it's not particularly scary. I think it's the pupils. If the pupils were either removed... I mean, that's... That's already spookier. This is just... <laughs> this is just truly spectacular. So I gave myself the task of building this scary face, and then I thought to myself, you know what would be interesting? If zombies actually had their own bases, and at night when it gets dark, they come out of their bases, a little bit like how pillagers have their outposts, imagine if regular mobs had their own little outposts. And off the back of that thought, I then thought to myself, well, if Mojang aren't going to do it, then I might as well do it. I might as well build a base for zombies, which involves all sorts of different redstone contraptions that zombies would personally have. First things first, I actually have to finish up this structure. Now, originally I was going to have arms reaching out and clawing at the earth, but frankly, I lack the talent to build something like that, at least in an effective fashion. So instead, I thought I would build up a sort of little tiered pyramid going out the back here that we can then add some depth to. And yes, we definitely need to add some depth because despite this being tiered, it looks as flat as a pancake. And doing all this has definitely, definitely helped. If you want some cheat codes for Minecraft building, waterfalls, waterfalls make everything better, and also bushes. And of course, stone slabs, but that goes without saying. So both sides of this thing are now all in place and it's looking incredibly grand. The only issue is, is that... Yeah, we've, we've got a bit of an issue with the head. I need to work out what I'm going to do here. Do I just extend this back? I mean, that feels a tiny bit lazy, but then it also kind of makes sense to do that. Yes, it totally does. I'd say this works well. So with all of the external details now fully sorted, it's time for the interesting bit. It's time to start chucking some redstone contraptions into this thing. But before I do, I've got to say, I'm pretty proud of myself here. I actually really like the way this thing's come together. Anyway, redstone build number one is of course going to be this, piston door right here. I want to retract all of these teeth down into the ground and that could actually be a bit of a challenge. Now of course this is going to make use of slime blocks and honey blocks to function and the only way that it can work is if these ones move down first and then these ones and then when it closes these ones need to move no the oh oh Ooh, that was me realizing that my idea isn't going to work. And then I came up with a bunch of other ideas that didn't work. But now I think I finally thought of something that will actually function. So these two teeth are going to be operated by flying machines. This central segment is going to be pulled down by this slime block here. And then these two teeth on either side are just going to be pulled off to the side. I know that does kind of lessen the effect of the mouth opening, but it's the only way that I can think to make this thing function. Now here comes the big question. Is this flying machine actually passed the push limit. It is not. Okay, that is exciting. The next question is, I've never really tried this. Does string stop a flying machine? I mean, I'm assuming not. No. But fear not, because I've come up with another smart solution, and that is to re-extend these blocks at the perfect time, so when this is in position, these blocks will be pushed across, then it will be over the push limit, so the flying machine will stop flying. I won't lie, I'm actually quite proud of myself for thinking of that one. So let me give you a rundown of this new solution. So first off, this double piston extender fires, bringing all of this down, then these pistons fire, moving these blocks out of the way, allowing our flying machine to go downwards once these blocks have moved out of the way, and then these pistons re-extend, plugging up the hole in the floor. Then when it comes to the closing, I need to move these blocks out of the way, have the flying machines fire, then these blocks move across at the perfect time so they stop in the right position, then these pistons push back across, and this central double piston extender fires again. Shouldn't be too hard. I said that with far too much confidence. Circuit number one is now all in place, so this is the pull down and move out the way. Circuit number two should now be all in place, which is the pull down, move out the way, and then the flying machines dropping down, which that has all gone perfectly first time. That doesn't often happen, so it's always good to celebrate it when it does. Does this next part of the circuit work? I hope it does. It does. So that is the full opening sequence all done. The closing is a lot more complicated. And that timing is wrong. But now the timing is right, so I think we can remove these immovable objects. And this really is going to be a moment of truth. Here we go. So the flying machines will fly up. Blocks push out and stop them. That is fantastic. It's always the last redstone circuit that you build that makes you realize the first redstone circuit you built was totally stupid. After some serious redesigning, it was finally done. So here we go. We have got the opening sequence. 
that is all working perfectly. Everything drops down into the floor. It looks fantastic. And then the closing sequence, which is the scary bit, is all working really, really well. That all popped up incredibly fast. I need to sort this out. Our zombie looks like he's in desperate need of a dentist. Now, my plan of action is to have this door automatically open and close, depending on the time of day. So when it gets to night, the door will open up, allowing all of the zombies to pour out. And when it gets to daytime, of course, the door will close up. So let's see how well this works then. If we set the time to night, okay. That looks absolutely spectacular. That looks really, really cool. And then if we set the time to day, that all seems to be working. And I am chuffed to bits with this one. But I have spent an awfully long time on it, so let's move on. What I really like the idea of is at this time of day here where the sun is about to rise, obviously our door is still open, which is great. That's exactly what I hoped for. But also, you can see that this daylight sensor right here is giving off a small number of redstone outputs. Now what this means is, is we could have an alarm system that basically warns local zombies that the sun is rising and they should get back inside. Now I'm just curious when our door actually closes. So I'm doing some very precision time measurements here. No, it's still open. 23800, that's when the door closes. So our alarm will play until that time and that has been achieved through this really simple little redstone circuit that retracts the piston when the redstone signal strength gets too strong i have no clue why i'm doing this part first i'm really going to regret doing this part first yep i already hate myself i already hate myself i i hate myself <laughs> i hate myself so much <laughs> but this is absolutely perfect and then when it gets to 23800 the bells turn off the door closes up and our zombies should hopefully all be back within their home. But I definitely think there's more that we can do with this concept simply because the bell's sound doesn't actually travel a crazy distance. It only goes to around about here. And we want to really, we want to send a signal to zombies that have really traveled out during the night. And to do that, I would say the best option has to be smoke signals, doesn't it? I mean, that seems like the best way to go. That is definitely mildly terrifying. And now that I have all the redstone in place, let's give this thing a tester. So currently it is daytime. The smoke signals are pretty much turned off. There is no alarm. If we set the time to 23800, then there shouldn't be anything either. And the door should be closed. That's excellent. If we then set the time to 23700, the alarms and everything should be going off and the door should be opened. And yet yeah, the fire is coming out the top of the head. That is brilliant. Now, if we set the time to midnight, the door should stay open, but the alarm is switched off and the smoke signals have switched off. And then if we set the time today, the door should close and everything should be switched off. Yeah, there's no smoke signals. There's only tiny particles getting through. This is all working properly. That was definitely nerve wracking because there's a little bit of logic involved there and I didn't think anything was going to function. Clearly, my two brain cells have produced extra brain cells over the weekend. Right, should we move on to the inside of this thing? Now, I think for me, the best way to do this is to make almost a central hallway going through the center with a handful of rooms going off on either side. Now, hallways are not something that I'm particularly confident with, especially tall ones like this. But I am quite liking this sort of shape. So if we had a handful of arches say spaced out every five blocks or so that should be pretty good this is already feeling like something out of harry potter and i'm loving it i mean just look how cool this room is so i'm gonna build little rooms popping off on either side but in this final section here i thought it would be definitely worth having some form of set of mob cages that we can also activate and deactivate depending on the time of day. You see, in this universe where zombies can do redstone, I imagine that instead of spawning out just in the world, they will spawn inside this space right here and then travel out into the world from their temple. Yes, I am now referring to this thing as a temple. So that should be all the redstone lamps now fully connected up. So during the daytime, these redstone lamps are going to be on, which means no zombies will be spawning. And I also think it would be quite cool to have a little piston door or a piston fence, I guess, down at the front here that will open up when it gets dark. Not that it's really needed because of course we've got this door out the front, but piston doors are always fun. So let's have a look then. If I set the time to midnight, then those redstone lamps turn off the piston door is open, those monster spawners are active, 
and then if I set the time back to daytime, everything switches back on. And just so you know, nothing spawned because I'm currently in peaceful mode. And yes, I'm well aware that it's very funny that I'm building a zombie temple whilst playing in peaceful mode. Room number one isn't necessarily going to be a room. Instead, it's going to be an armor equipping station, obviously, so we can kit out our zombies with the best gear. Now I have to say, it's actually been ages since I've built one of these things and I've kind of missed it. Now of course because we expect a lot of zombies to be coming through this thing, it will probably be smart to actually have extra storage for all the armour and things. So let's give it a quick tester then. Say I'm a zombie, I walk inside here, I hit this button, I get kitted out with a netherite sword and also full netherite armour, which is... Yeah, let's be honest, that's a, that's a little bit ridiculous. That might be a little bit overpowered, but that's absolutely fine. Room number two is going to be a villager purification chamber. So, you know, we have zombie purification chambers where you want to convert zombie villagers back into being villagers. Well, of course, if you're a zombie, you want to be converting villagers into zombie villagers. So this is a villager purification chain but this is complicated even for my little brain now originally i was going to make this a room that you could go into but i think it's much funnier if we actually activate all of it on the outside using a button and then we can watch the villager get converted and then maybe drop through the floor into a zombie catchment zone i personally am really really liking the sound of this but now that the zombies are actually in place i'm starting to like the sound of it a lot less i tell you what though dual wielding netherited zombies are definitely something that i would like to see in the game and I know I would regret saying that if one actually came up to me, but I think they're awesome. Let's see how well they deal with this villager. Do they convert him quickly? Yes, they do. And then he's going to drop through into the floor? No? <laughs> no, he hasn't done that. I think a few modifications to the redstone are in order. So let's see then. Our villager drops down from the ceiling, immediately gets converted by the zombies into a zombie villager, and then gets dropped through out of the system. That is pretty fancy. I'm not even a zombie, and I kind of want one of these villager conversion chambers. We really didn't have much space to play with with this one, so I thought I'd make a little bedroom, and that did raise a rather interesting question. Do you think zombies sleep? Like, maybe that's why they're so angry all the time, and maybe that's why they're making those noises. Those are the sorts of noises that I make when I'm tired, so it's no surprise. Hopefully with the addition of this bedroom, we should actually breed some really friendly zombies here. Anyway, for the final room in this little hallway, I thought it'd be really interesting to have a meeting room. I love the idea of zombies meeting up together to decide where they're going to attack, and now I've got to make some maps. So that's one map of a village, this is another map of a village, here goes another map of a village, and a few more maps of various different villages. I don't know how, but I managed to visit the same village twice without realising, which is quite surprising given that I was teleporting all over the world. Regardless, with that little meeting room now all done and dusted, our zombie temple is all completed, and i got to say, I'm really, really happy with this thing. I'm super happy with how it came together visually. I'm really happy with the redstone systems. I love the piston door. I love the alarm system that we've got. I love all of the things that we've done on the inside. It's just a cool build. It is a really, really cool build. So I hope you enjoyed watching me gradually make my way through this build. If you want to see more of these mob-based structures, then please let me know down in the comment section. But anyway, I'll catch you in the next video. See ya. And I do seriously really hope that you did enjoy this because this for me was a really fun video to make. Simply because it felt a little bit old school in nature. You know, this is the sort of thing that I used to build when I first started playing Minecraft. I used to work on these temples, creeper temples, and like zombie temples and pig temples. So it was a bit of a hark back to my past. And I, I really do hope that you enjoyed.